Hello and welcome back to The Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in today's video we're going to do a little work on a new piece of equipment uh, that I've got here at The Tin Barn or at least new to me. Uh, no, it's not another piece of machining equipment. It's what's called a Big Tex 35SA 6.5 foot by 12 foot uh, single axle trailer. The tailgate on this trailer is uh, rather heavy and as I said we're going to see if we can install a lift assist on it. The lift we're going to be installing is, Gorilla, is by Gorilla Lift. I think they're kind of the leader in, the, uh, in this industry or, or in this product line uh, and I have to give full kudos to Gorilla Lift without going into a lot of detail on my order. There was an issue with the order when I bought it uh, from a retailer, but Gorilla Lift stepped right up to the plate and fixed it within a matter of days. Uh, like I say, I got the highest praise for this company. So let's move outside now and uh, start installing this uh, lift assist. Before we actually start uh, installing the uh, lift assist, I want to point out that I've got jack stands under the back of the trailer. I will be climbing in and out of the trailer and I do not want it to tip over. Of course the front is on the jack. So let's let this down now. Alright, that unusual snap on this, on letting that tailgate down. This tailgate is designed that it can fold all the way to the inside. And so there's kind of a breakover point right there. Uh, honestly, I don't see the logic behind a tailgate that folds to the inside. Sure, it would be less wind resistance going down the road, but the only time that you can fold this tailgate down on the inside is when it's empty. And there's not a whole lot of purpose in pulling an empty trailer, uh, at least not in in my plans for the trailer anyhow this lift assist of course is going to negate that folding to the inside but as i say that's not something i would ever use before we put the the assist on i want to do something and those of you that follow the channel know i like to weigh things So I'm going to see just how heavy this tailgate is. I got my uh, strap on the on the hoist. And got the scales on it. Let's uh I ain't even picked it up yet and it's already registering 40 pounds. That's 54 pounds. All right, I tried to zoom the camera in a little bit to, to show you the uh, scale itself, but the sun is back behind us back here, and it's just not showing up that well, but it's at 54 pounds, which is about 25 kilograms. I know there's several other videos on YouTube that uh, uh, show installing these Gorilla lifts, uh, but every one that I checked out had flat rails, uh, angle iron for the top rail. This one has a uh, not just a little over uh, two inch, about two and three eighths inch round uh, top rail, and Gorilla says uh, that if you if your trailer does have round top rail, just to be careful and be sure you're in line, you you keep your your uh, housings in line and straight. What I did this vertical rail on here or vertical housing is welded to the outside of this uh, frame and welded to the inside of the top rail and it's one eighth of an inch thick so i found just this piece of uh, scrap one inch angle iron lunium angle iron that's eighth of an inch thick notched out one end down here and then i know the exact dimension the exact diameter of this is uh, 2.360. So I divided that in half and just simply 
cut me a piece. I did it on the mill, but you could do it on a hacksaw or on a bandsaw and clamped it on or screwed it onto that. So what I can do is come down here and simply clamp it to the bottom down there, let it bottom out. Now this being half the width, I'll put a mark. Now I know that's directly on top now, directly top dead center. Come down here and do this about halfway. Do the same thing. And I'll come down here at the, the end and do another one. Now I'm just going to take a straight edge, in this case a six foot level, and extend the mark to all the places where it's needed, which of course is going to be each end and in the middle. So now I've got a pencil line down the top center of this. Gorilla Lift says start it your first piece at a quarter inch from the end. Now, that doesn't set too well on that. Kind of hard to hold. So what I did, I made some little standoffs. Let me come around here so maybe you could get a better look at them. These are little standoffs that I made and powder coated which this concave in here matches the uh, diameter of the, uh, of the top rail. At the end of this video, if you'll stick around, I got like a little four minute condensed clip of making these standoffs. So I'm gonna set one of them up here. Another one at about halfway. Slide this down to where it's at my quarter inch mark. And that center line that I put on there is in the center of the bolt hole. Now I'm just going to take a little scribe, 90 degree scribe, and scratch on that line or scratch on the paint. Remember I'm, I'm placing this pencil line in between in the center of the bolt hole and I can also see that I'm going to need to trim off the end of this uh, uh, standoff so I've got a couple marks on there now that one I can see real good I think I see those marks, but just to be absolutely sure, it's exactly 34 inches in between. Yeah, I'm seeing the, I'm seeing the right spot. Alright, I'm going to go inside and trim off this. I'm just going to set it up in the mill and trim two of them uh, to that with so that they don't stick out. I'll be right back. Okay, I want to make this perfectly clear that you don't have to have these standoffs if you've got uh, round railings like this. But I would highly recommend that you have a second person with you uh, to help hold the, uh, the housings in place. I've got four of them milled off now so that there'll be none of that sticking out the edge got the hole marked so I'm going to drill a starter hole to begin with and lining that up as close to vertical as I can, can with my icrometer the bolts that mount these uh, housing down to the railing are 5 16 carriage bolts and the ones shipped with it are were two and a half inches. Since my rail is a little over two and a quarter inches 2.360 plus I've got the width of the standoffs in there 
I simply went down to the local hardware store and picked up some uh, uh, carriage bolts a half inch longer. The instructions say uh, that you need to drill these half inch. Remember it's a 5 sixteenths bolt. And I'm sure the reason they're doing that, or the reason they tell you to drill such a big hole, is to have room for the square on the carriage to seat into, which in my case I accounted for that in the holes in the standoffs. But also I'm sure they were uh, giving you some wiggle room. I'm going to start out with a 3 8 bit instead of that big half inch. If that doesn't work I can always drill a bigger hole. And as you've heard me say before on this channel, this drill right here is a DeWalt 8.5 uh, amp uh, 3 8 drill bit. No, half inch drill bit. The worst I've ever been hurt out here in the tin barn was because of this drill right here binding into a thick piece of metal. So I'm going to try to take it easy and not hurt myself. <laughs> Okay, the instructions also say to set, line both pieces up at your quarter inch mark down here, line both pieces up, easily remove this piece and mark your holes for the second piece. And again, if you were on a flat rail, that would be fairly simple to do. Not quite so simple on a round. Uh, if you had holding help, I'm sure it would be. Before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and test these holes. Everything is lining up fine with that. So now what I'm going to do is set the second rail up here, butt it tied up against it, come down here to the other end, lining up, centering it up on my line, and I'm going to mark where the end of that is. All the time, being certain you're using the pieces, the pieces are uh, relative to which side of the trailer you're working with. You always want to be sure your decal is facing out and that the end piece down here is the one with the, with the bevel on the end. Again, I'm just going to take my little 90 degree scribe and I'm marking both sides of that uh, this square in here. I should be able to see it, which I can. Okay, all of our holes are drilled for this side, so let's see if we can do a little blind assembly. Let me do a spot check right here. That looks correct. And you'll see why I say blind in just a second here. This calls for a nut and a washer. See how I was holding that bolt with my, with my finger? Won't be able to do that on the next piece. And I'm just going to go for one hole at a time right here. And I tell you what folks, I'm not going to fight that a whole lot. This one I can reach in from the end and get into it. But I got a little tack welder in the tin barn here. Uh, I'm going to step in there. Let's see, I might try this one more time. Alright, that lines up a little better. It may fall in there now. Alright, again, I don't want to make this look more difficult than it really is. 
if you've got flat railings uh, on your trailer, you've only got one surface you've got to worry about getting that bolt through. In this case, well, one surface plus your uh, uh, plus your housing here. With this round, you've got to get it through this top part and line it up and get it through the bottom as well. And there it came in. Very good. I didn't didn't have to get the welder out. Here, I just got to be careful putting the nut on that I keep it in that carriage bolt in the square. All right, let's come down here. That lines up perfect. Guys, I'm beginning to see now why they encourage you to, to drill a half inch hole. To get this end one, the one on the end down here, I'm going to go ahead and extend that hole on out to a half inch. That gives me a little bit of, little bit of play room to swing that bolt. All right, that's all it took. I guess the folks that wrote those instructions knew what they were talking about, at least for this hole. Remember, the spring assembly is going to be inside of this. And it needs to be able to stretch and contract. That's why we're using carriage head bolts in here to give us flat a surface as possible. Uh, one video I did watch on YouTube, they were trying to use regular hex head bolts and their spring kept jamming up in here. They couldn't understand what was wrong with the, with the product. All right, I'm gonna tighten these bolts down. And I hope if you've got a round rail on the top of yours, it's sturdy enough that you don't crush it with the wrench. But just be mindful of that. Okay, that's the housing mounted on one side. I'm going to do the other side off camera. Uh, exactly the same process. The only thing I'll do different is that I'll go ahead and drill a half inch hole in, in the end down here instead of the 3 eighths. But otherwise, I think that's pretty much it. So we'll come back when we get ready to, to install the springs. Okay, I guess I should have uh, installed the off camera side first because it went a whole lot easier than this side did. Uh, had nothing to do with the sides but just a little bit of experience here. And again I want to be sure everyone understands this is not difficult at all. The round reeling up here made it considerably more difficult than it would be on a flat surface. But we've got it in, uh, both sides mounted. The next step is in, to install the spring. This is actually two springs, a small spring inside of a larger spring. And we'll start down here at this end and actually push it in. All right, and that come out the other end. Now I'm going to reposition the camera now down here to show you how we hook in those springs to the, uh, to the housing itself. All right, I've got your position down here at this end where we got to uh, stabilize or pin the uh, the springs. As I said, there's two springs in here. There's a smaller one inside and the larger one, of course, on the outside. And we've got to run this pin through both of them. Now, the easiest thing to do is come back over here, start it in one side, run it through the small spring first, and then it lines up very easily with the, with the large spring. One of the supplied washers, this pin looks a bit overcomplicated, but it's not. It won't go on there, but one way. All right, there is this end secured. I'll move the camera around to the other end and show you in certain rollers. All right, we're down at the other end now with the cable coming out. We have two rollers to go in here, one on top of the cable, one at the bottom. You definitely want to install the top cable first and hang on to it. Don't let it slide back down in there. If you do, just simply get your little hook piece of wire and get it out. 
Now this gets two washers on the inside. I think that's probably just because the pin is a bit long. But again, another one of these combination clips. Okay. Now we put the cable in between and do the second one. Same way. Two washers and the pin. All right. Now I think we're ready to uh, lift the tailgate back up and determine the position to mount these. This cable eye that's coming out the end here and is between our two rollers needs to be under tension and will be bolted into the uh, tailgate rail. Again, this, this tailgate is a little bit different than what I've seen on some other installation videos on YouTube in that this is the two inch box instead of just a piece of angle iron. So we'll be drilling all the way through this as well. Hardware kit comes with some S hooks. And what they're for, they're just temporary. You put pressure on this with the S hook hooked over here in the grate at some starting point. I'm going to pull a little tension and put them right here. I need to pull some, pull some tension and hook it. Now I'm going to go over there and do the same thing to the other side, being sure I stay in line. Then we'll let the tailgate down. The idea is that you have enough tension on this spring to pretty much hold it on its own at about half the way down. I see a lot of people doing it with it flat out, but the instructions say with it halfway down. So we'll just keep working this back and forth a few times until we're, until we're satisfied with how much relief or assistance we're getting. You may notice over here on this side that I have a bungee cord holding this up now. The reason of that, it is locked on each side, but there was a little bit of slack as you can see there in the tailgate and I wanted the tailgate to be pulled tight. So I'm going to find the uh, same position on this side. I started with this hook at 19 inches from the top. Huh, I guessed it just the right one. All right, so let's pull some tension on this cable right here and hook it. All right, now I can remove this bungee. Now let's see about how much weight we've got when we let the gate down. I'll release the locks. And I've actually got too much tension. As you can see when I when I pull this down now, it actually goes back up. So let's go down. I'm going down one notch in the expanded metal. Still a bit too much tension. So we'll go down another one. I'm going to put the lock back on down here to keep it from, from falling while I'm doing this. That's still just a little bit tight. Remember, we won't be dependent on the, the assist to hold it up. That's what the locks are for. Alright, I think that's good right there. Now, we want to move this out here. And remember I said this tailgate was one that would fold on the inside. So it's a little bit narrower than what you would find relation-wise to the width of the trailer. But the bolts that we'll be using in here will be long enough to keep this in line straight. I'm going to use my tri-square to transfer that position around to the uh, to both sides. I 
that's two inch so I'll set my tri square at one inch and I'm probably going to get between the camera and the work but there's my pencil mark and I want to cross that at one inch on this side and one inch over here and just like the holes in the top rail we're going to step drill this but not until I put a fresh battery in And this one definitely does need to be a half inch. Alright, we should be done with our S hooks now. So take that out. Now, this is a half inch bolt. We install a washer on it. Run it through our cable eye. Install a nut with the flange to the outside. Another washer washer on the back side and the flange to the inside here now all I'm doing right now is simply trying to eye this so that this cable is in line and I think that's pretty good right there all right I'm going to do the same thing to the other side over there and then we'll do a quick recap I have this bolt adjusted out so that uh, the cable, when it's out at this end, stays in line with the groove in the rollers here. But again, being the design that this tailgate is, uh, there's no tension on it when it's back up here at rest. And so <clears throat> in cycling it up and down a couple times, I noticed the cable didn't have a uh, particular home to stay in. And it does need to stay in line with this. So I simply went in there to the lathe, turned out, drilled out a piece of round stock with one inch or half inch to go in place here. Okay, I hope you got a little something out of this uh, Gorilla Lift uh, Lift Assist install. Uh, again, it would uh, it would go a whole lot easier with this round railing had I had another hand here. But to show you the results of it, you remember we were picking up 55 pounds before. So the tailgate stays down by itself. One finger. Again, a final word of appreciation to Gorilla Lift for their assistance uh, in the uh, in. Getting my order complete, y'all take care and I'll see you on the next video.